If you want heat in your garage, then check out Mr. Heater. What's happening, Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. I'm out in my garage with Mr. Heater. It says Mr. Heater right on the top there. So I just had this installed here to keep my garage cozy in cold weather, which even though it's springtime right now, I just saw that we might be getting snow again, which is kind of crazy. Now, this has been all set up and is on and is working great. So I thought I'd give you a little tour of my new garage heater. All right, so if you order this, this is what you're gonna get in the box. This heater is not that expensive. I think I paid $260 for it, and I really love them, especially when you're in the garage like this, and my garage isn't heated. Some of the old school garages actually had a vent, you know, just like any of the vents in your house, to feed some hot air to your garage, but now those, I think, are illegal because they might backflow. You know, the exhaust from your car might backflow through the vent into your furnace, so they don't allow that anymore. So having something like this to heat your garage can be really great. Now, this one is a natural gas heater. I actually had a Dynaglow one that was natural gas or propane, and you had to adjust the little switch between the two. The problem with that is that if it's on the wrong setting, I think it won't burn properly. But I like this because I know when it gets set up, it's set up for natural gas, and it shouldn't cause any problems. Now, this is a 30,000 BTU. <laughs> Love those Brits. Heater heats up to a thousand square foot. This is about a 600 square foot garage here. And so that's actually a pretty big room. I don't doubt that. Electric ignition, built in thermostat, no venting required. And so basically, because it's burning gas, it's not putting out soot, smoke like that. And it also has a low oxygen safety shutoff. So if for some reason it is in an enclosed space, like a sealed up attic or something like that, and it's not getting enough air, it'll also turn off. So I love the fact that it has some of those safety features. And then I did not get the blower fan kit. You can get that to really kind of move the air a little bit more. You know, if you have a really big room, I might suggest that so that you don't have some cold spots. It's warm over here by the heater and cold over there. Kind of move that air around ceiling fan might work too but i've never had that problem now i do want to show you in here in the box even though i've got it set up already you do get a couple of these feet so i think if you wanted to install these on the bottom and actually have it sitting on the floor kind of like a space heater you can certainly do that too now i had a plumber come and install this because i needed it to connect to this gas line and i never really thought plumbers installed gas line stuff but it totally makes sense because it's all just plumbing and it wasn't that expensive, but that's what you need. And I wanted to have it done professionally because I just wanted to make sure there weren't any gas leaks. Things like the little valve was installed here. This is a trap for sediment that might be in the gas line. So they just do a nice job on it. I think this is half inch inner diameter pipe, but the connector on the bottom right there, I think is three eighths of an inch. So that's why there is an adapter. You can see that the pipe that goes into the heater is a little bit smaller. So three eighths of an inch, I think if you were trying to get the hardware. And I've seen some people with their install here have kind of a flexible pipe going up to that that could probably work too kind of depends on how you have it set up if it's free floating but this is mounted to the wall there's actually a bracket that you can attach to the wall and then you attach this and hang that on the wall now i want to give you some dimensions of this first so the thing is pretty big it's kind of like a large space heater you can see it's about 27 inches wide right there and top to bottom again i'm ballparking here it's about 25 inches tall and then it's going to stick out of the wall there's a body to this which when it mounted to the wall here, looks like it's about six inches up at the top, seven inches down in the bottom. But then with this protective grate on the front here, it kind of sticks out almost 10 inches, right? So it's gonna stick away from the wall and you don't wanna have anything right up against it or next to it. Obviously the heat is gonna rise. You have this grate on the front and then you have this glass or plexiglass in front of the burners itself. Now, the middle piece right there is the pilot light and then you have that fuel line Kind of like a gas barbecue burner right there. And everything should burn kind of blue. So you shouldn't get really much of a yellow flame. I think that's kind of the telltale sign that something's a little amiss. You basically, you're going to get that blue flame that you will like on your gas stove. All right. Now, the other thing I love about this is that they include attached on this little wire here an instruction booklet. So every fall when you turn on something like this for your garage or whatever, Everyone's always looking for the instructions on how to light it. So all those instructions are printed right here. And these are some sort of plastic. I mean, they're not paper, and so they're hard and hopefully not flammable. But they just kind of hang back there. And so you can 
kind of grab them and pull them out if you need to. But the nice thing about it is that you have those there. Now I thought maybe they'd get really hot. So I touched back here while this thing was on and it's not particularly hot. It's warm, but it's not hot. And so that makes a big difference here so that you don't need to have your paper manual handy. So I think that's a small but lovely little innovation. Now, I do wanna show you how to start this thing. Now, I will also say here, I've made this mistake in the past by having this too high. You want this low enough so that you can see these controls like the thermostat knob and the ignition switch here, as well as you also wanna have it low enough so that the thermostat is working right and that the hot air rises and that it's reading the temperature here. Because if you have it too high, you actually might have to really crank it up to get enough warm air to kind of fill the room down here. So there's a couple of reasons to have it right here. I mean, you can have it on the floor, like I said, with those feet. But for me, just something I can walk up to, see everything, even though I'm kind of short, makes a big difference. So that was a lesson learned. Don't make my mistake. But the way you get this thing started here, you can see we have a control knob and then an ignition switch right there. And what you want to do is in the off position here, you want to go ahead and turn this clockwise to pilot. And then what you want to do is you want to hold the pilot light down. I'm going to try to do this one handed and then hit this ignition switch. And what you can see there is now the pilot light is lit, but I'm still holding this down and I want to hold it down for five seconds to let this bleed out. If this is your first time installing this, you want to make sure you hold this down for 30 seconds. And I think that is going to make sure that that sensor gets up to temperature so that it doesn't automatically shut off. If I release this right now, that pilot light should stay on there and it does, all right? Now what we wanna do is we want to rotate this via the thermostat to the temperature that we want. And if I go up to one here, and because I have left this off and the garage is very cold, even on one, it's going to fire up because the temperature in here is only maybe 40 degrees, 45 degrees. And so what you can do here is the higher you go, the warmer it will keep this room. Now, for me, I have kind of found that having it on three tends to be pretty good for my garage. It kind of hovers right around 60, 64 degrees. It's not gonna be maybe as exact as a thermostat in your home, your nest, something like that. But that's always kept it very comfortable. And right now it's actually putting out a pretty good deal of heat. I can feel it right here, but I wanna show you as I go up here, this right above it is where you feel the most heat. So you don't wanna have a shelf or anything like that right here, cause it is gonna cook. It's almost uncomfortable to have my hand there because of that heat rising off of here. Now I will say, I just have some bare drywall right here. And when I touch that, it actually, the heat is rising so fast, it's just kind of riding along the wall. And so the wall and my hand is pretty comfortable right there. Cause I was worried about having something right above this, maybe even ceiling trim or your crown molding would that catch on fire. But the higher I put my hand up here, the more it just feels like warm air, not even like a hair dryer or anything like that. So the nice thing is I don't have to worry about anything, I think, catching on fire. Now, I was thinking about putting like a disc plate, like metal artwork right there. And I think that would be fine because it's not flammable and it might actually even protect the drywall a little bit from baking. So just kind of keep that in mind. You don't want like a shelf or anything like that right above it because right here, the temperature is pretty warm pretty warm. So anyway, this is my new garage heater and I've been using it a while, professionally installed, and it works absolutely amazing and it makes it really comfortable so that when I'm out here working on my golf clubs, working on my car, when I'm banished from my house, whatever, it's actually really comfortable. Even on the coldest days this winter, the garage has always been really comfortable and it's also less hard on the things that you store in your garage, whether it's your bicycles, the rubber and the seals there, your tools, your car, the hoses, the belts, the plastics, the rubbers on your cars don't like to be shrunk and reheated and all that stuff too. So I think just everything that you'll have in your garage is going to be maintained a little bit better. Now, the other thing that I chose this for was that this is just obviously like a gas heater here. They do make one that is like a ceramic heater and it has some sort of ceramic panel there and it heats that up and I feel like it would just use flame to do that but it kind of puts out infrared heat for the most part now I actually like this because it's my understanding and I'm not a scientist 
but burning natural gas actually produces a little bit of humidity. So that's a byproduct of it, the water vapor or something like that. So I actually like that too, because especially in the winter, you don't get a lot of humidity. And especially out here in the garage, things can get dried out. I have wood, rubber, all that kind of stuff. And to add a little humidity back to the air, I think is actually an advantage too. So that's why I stuck with this as opposed to going to one of the infrared heaters. So if you like this and you want heat, then you might want to call up Mr. Heater because he has been keeping my garage nice and warm for not a lot of money. If having a warm garage is going to keep your stuff more protected and preserved and make you a little more comfortable, I'll put a link to this one in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out. We can stop more and explore so much deeper